Hi, my name is Nick Smallwood and I'm a consultant in acute medicine. In this video, we're going to take you through the theoretical aspects of peripheral vascular access. Here we're going to cover peripheral vascular access and a brief overview of Doppler imaging. The first thing to say is that peripheral vascular access under ultrasound guidance has become a core skill of anyone who works at the front door. 10 or 15 years ago, it was relatively uncommon to need to get the ultrasound machine out. But these days, on most shifts, there will be a difficult vascular access problem, which is usually solved using an ultrasound probe. We're going to briefly talk about the recognition of veins versus arteries, touch again on the Doppler and the principles of it, and then finally, some examples of in-plane and outer plane cannulation, the two easiest techniques to learn. Many of you will be very familiar with the idea of what represents a vein and what represents an artery on ultrasound. But just to clarify, veins tend to have a very minimally visible wall, whereas the arteries have a slightly thick muscular wall and therefore they are visible often on ultrasound. Veins tend to be oval or round, whereas arteries are usually very circular. An artery will tend to be pulsatile and this is particularly obvious when you're putting any pressure on the artery whereas veins won't be pulsatile. And similarly, veins will be compressible, whereas arteries are generally not compressible, except in shocked states where the systemic arterial pressure might be low. And finally, in arteries, you usually have a very clear direction of flow, whereas in veins, the flow can be ambiguous or not present at all. Just to recap around Doppler signals and color Doppler, this curve is meant to represent the arch of the aorta. And if you imagine your blood flow, in the first instance, when it's running parallel to the direction of beam of the probe, you'll get a very bright color signal generated. In this instance, you get red flow, which represents the fact that it's towards the probe. As the angle of the probe relative to the flow of the blood becomes less acute, you'll notice that the arrow is becoming less bright, representing less clear flow. And then as the flow is perpendicular to the probe, you get no color Doppler signal at all. And then as the flow tends to move away from the probe, you'll get blue flow, which again, when it runs parallel to the probe, will be at its brightest. The mnemonic to remember this is blue away, red towards, or BART. And the example of that in real life is this image here where you can see in the bottom left of the box, you've got regular pulsatile red flow in the artery. In the vessel just above it, you get transient low flow, which is in a vein. And most of that flow is transmitted from the arterial pulse below it. Whereas in the vein in the top right of the box, you'll see there's no Doppler color signal generated, indicating no significant flow. Of course, part of this depends on the settings of your machine and the sensitivity of the color Doppler but generally speaking, you tend not to see flow in most veins on standard settings. So to reiterate, there are two important concepts when you're using color Doppler. The first is that flow is only really visible when the probe is not perpendicular to the flow. And the second is that the color scale is of relevance if you consider the direction your probe is facing relative to the flow. So let's move on to the needling techniques. There are two typical techniques that people tend to use, which is in-plane or out-of-plane. And this image represents a probe which is faced with the long axis towards you, and the needle is coming in from the side in the plane of the ultrasound beam. That will tend to give you the appearance of a vein like this, so a long hollow tube running across the image. The majority of times you'll be doing peripheral vascular access, you will use the out-of-plane technique as referenced here. So in this case, the needle is cutting across the plane of the ultrasound beam, and it tends to give you the appearances of a vessel like this. So the vessel itself looks circular. And as we see how that looks on the real image, you can see the full length of the needle coming in from the left on the in-plane technique. Whereas out of plane access, you just tend to see a small part of the shaft of the needle as it breaks the ultrasound beam. And there are advantages and disadvantages with both techniques. If we first focus on out of plane imaging, which is likely to be the majority of ways of accessing the peripheral vasculature, 
I want you to imagine that this is someone's forearm cut through with the vessel that you want to access. And this is your probe, which is running perpendicular to the vessel. In this case, we're looking at the probe through the short axis. The first thing to do is to measure the depth of the vessel, which is usually easily visible on the screen. And in this example, it's two centimeters deep. If you then start your needle two centimeters back from the center of the probe and run the angle in at 45 degrees, Using simple trigonometry, you will be able to access the vessel perfectly each time. Now the thing to note is that two centimeters back from the center of the beam is about one and a half centimeters back from the edge of the probe as you see it, because the probe itself is about a centimeter thick with the beam arising right from the center of it. And as already highlighted, this will give you an image like you can see on the screen here where the shaft of the needle as it crosses the ultrasound beam will generate the white triangular appearance. And you can see that piercing the vessel. The main issue when performing out of plane cannulation is that it's possible to injure vessels below the target vessel. And this example is trying to highlight how that can happen. So as you can see, when the needle breaks the ultrasound plane, you will get the image that we've just seen. But if you were to accidentally continue on through the vessel, the ultrasound machine will still paint exactly the same image because all it's seeing is the shaft of the needle as it breaks the ultrasound beam. So injury below the vessel of choice or below the target is the risk you run when you're performing out of plane techniques. The way you can mitigate this is to try and follow your needle through. And this is an example. So you start with your needle as it pierces the skin and you then tilt the probe. So the beam of the ultrasound meets the needle on its way through. You then gradually rotate or tilt the probe and follow the needle as it passes its way into the target. And this then means that you can't allow the needle to pass through the ultrasound beam and damage structures below. This technique takes a little bit more practice, but certainly reduces the rate of complications once you've mastered it. So the out of plane technique tends to be easier to start with. And the big advantage is that you're able to do it when there's very little space, which is usually the case when you're performing peripheral vascular access. The disadvantage that we've just talked about is that if you don't visualize the needle tip on the way in, injury to nerves or vessels below your target can happen. The in-plane technique is harder to master, but does allow finer control of the needle and so can be used when there's a very small area for access. This is an example of an acidic procedure being undertaken with the in-plane technique. And this is what you will see on the screen. So the vessel will look smooth and flat and run across the screen. And you can see the whole shaft of the needle as it enters the vessel. Note on this image, you can also see an artifact generated just to the left of the ultrasound beam, and this is quite common. In-plane cannulation is generally more difficult to start off with, and that primarily is because the needle has to run in exactly the right plane the whole way along its length to be able to be visualized within the ultrasound beam. And if you imagine that the ultrasound beam is about one millimeter thick, that means you have very little room for maneuver either side when you're advancing your needle. The other problem with in-plane cannulation, particularly for peripheral vascular access, is that you need lots of space for both the probe and the needle and a relatively long and straight vein to access. And these things can often be difficult to come by. As opposed to out of plane cannulation, in which case the risk is damaging structures below the vessel or target of choice, when performing in-plane cannulation, it's more likely you'll cause lateral injury. And so you want to be aware of veins or structures which are lateral to the vessel of choice. And just a couple of hints to finish off with. We tend to look in veins which are in the antecubital fossa or above, so the brachial or cephalic veins, because anything below the antecubital fossa tends to be superficial and can be very difficult to access with ultrasound guidance.
if you're using the outer plane technique, which you're likely to in the first instance, try and map the path of the vein for a few centimeters above and below your target. And this allows you to know the course of the vein that you're trying to access. It's important to apply very little pressure when you're performing peripheral vascular access, particularly if the veins are superficial, because it's easy to compress them and make them impossible to access. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, make sure you plan where to put your probe down before you start the procedure, because there's nothing worse than being in the middle of a difficult cannulation and wondering where to put the probe so it won't fall on the floor. So to summarize, peripheral vascular access with ultrasound guidance is an increasingly important skill. We've highlighted two distinct techniques, each with their advantages and disadvantages, but practice will make perfect when finding the one which works for you. We have in this series further videos on the practicalities of peripheral vascular access using both techniques.